Have you ever encountered true evil? How? My grandmother started dating this guy a few years after her husband died, and I never liked him. He unsettled me, and most of my family. We all just had a terrible feeling about him. He hated children. Funny cause my sister and I were incredibly important to my grandmother. He was controlling. He tried to isolate her from the family. I don't know much more of the specifics than that cause I was 7-9 when this happened. But eventually, she left him and he started stalking her. Taking pictures and following her. She was planning on moving to live with my aunt and her family so that she could be more easily taken care of when the time came. She had sold her house. It was an escrow and everything. All she had to do was actually physically move. And this monster snuck into her house while she was letting her dog out and shot her. There are only two good things about this, in my opinion. 1. My grandmother didn't even know what happened. She didn't feel anything. She had no idea. And 2. The sucker tried to kill himself and laid in agony for hours while he was dying. He did die eventually. Like, 8 hours later if I remember right. It was terrible for my family though. It ruined all our lives for a while. My mom still doesn't know how to cope with it even 17 years later. I've spent a lot of time volunteering in a prison. As a teacher, every one of my students are good people who made bad decisions and are paying their debt. I've never thought of them as evil. Except for one student. Very very intelligent man. Serving time for killing his wife in a particularly heinous way. In casual conversation. He refers to her as his ex. Like, my ex and I went to Greece once. I was shocked the first time I heard him do it. She's not your ex-wife, man. She didn't divorce you. You chopped her to pieces. Closest thing to casual evil I've ever seen. Since he chopped her into pieces, maybe he was saying ex-wife. When I was a kid my sister dated a guy who would do things that I later realized were pretty sociopathic. One time while playing mini golf he threw a fist sized rock over the fence to a gas station. About 20 minutes later a guy came through who'd clearly been struck by the rock holding a rag to his head and covered in blood looking for who done it. But he looked the guy dead in the face and said I have no idea we've been playing mini golf. He laughed hysterically after the guy walked away like he'd done something clever. He also made me throw baseballs to him one time until he struck one to hit me right in the face. In hindsight most of them was by me and he kept insisting I throw more pitches. It was obvious, also later, but he was trying to hit me. When I woke up from being hit by the ball he was laughing hysterically. I saw him years later after they broke up. Funny thing was she wanted to marry that guy. Edit. I forgot about a couple of other things. We had a small teacup poodle and he slammed it in the back door. He said it was an accident but it shatters its leg. When I came outside he was holding it and it was screaming like dogs do in pain. And he was hysterically laughing at that as well. He also killed my parakeet with a vacuum cleaner supposedly while accidentally vacuuming my cage and catching the parakeet. When I was a boy, I had a wicked stepmother who revealed in beating me. She would beat me when my father was not present. Threatened to kill my brother if I said anything. She would use whatever objects were convenient to beat me with. Wooden spoon, hairbrush, dalrod dowel rod, rolling pin, her hands, fists, belt, whatever. One time she used a serpentine belt. She'd hit me where it wouldn't be visible when my father wasn't around. At one point, she had me drop my pants and underwear and didn't beat me until I nearly passed out. I jerked tensed out of pain and kicked off of her lap and kicked her in the face. She proceeded to pick me up by my leg and beat my balls with a wooden spoon. I'm not sure if she counted as evil, but she certainly counted as sadistic and vindictive. Yeah no that's plain and simple pure evil. Like really bad evil. My aunt and uncle were deep Christians and odd when I was growing up. They have 5 kids, but homeschooled because school is evil. They had no TV, because that would be evil. I was bored when at their house and saw both of them as kind of weird. About a two decade ago we found that he had been sexually abusing their 8 year old daughter. When confronted he admitted to it, along with using thousands of dollars to buy things for the other women he was with. His daughter lived with me and my wife for a few years when she was about 18. She was angry at herself for breaking up her family and had blocked all her memories of him abusing her. She never had counseling, because they didn't have money for it, and thought it was all a lie. She asked, 
and we found the original medical and police reports for her. I did not enjoy going over them with her. I hope to never see him again. So I've never met this man in my life but I've just heard the story from my grandparents and my mum as I got older. I have no idea what his name was but I'm going to call him Steve. Steve was a rather close family friend and was my granddad's accountant or something. I'm not entirely sure, but he handled some of his finances, while my granddad owned a business. Everything was going great. Steve was earning money through the company and also through other clients I imagine. He and my granddad would see each other a lot as there was a lot of photos. My granddad was a stubborn man, but if he liked you he would always include you in various things like coming over, going out for dinner and just making a genuine effort for you. If you earned his trust, it was truly earned. I don't know what caused these events, but Steve embezzled everything from my granddad, took all of his superannuation, 401k for the Americans, and he fled the country to god knows where. My granddad had to downsize his business back to his original factory. He had to sell his house that he and his partner absolutely loved. And to add further insult to injury he was fined tens of thousands of dollars for not having any super even though the agency and the police were perfectly aware of what had happened. Steve got away with it all. And there was no repercussions for what he did. And I don't believe he was ever found either. My granddad on the other hand couldn't afford to buy another home and had to rent out a place for the next 20 ish years and his landlord was his and butthole but that's another story. And my granddad was never able to retire. He still worked on his business, even though he was 80 years old. Admittedly he loved, but he was living month to month. No matter what our family did we could not convince my granddad to retire and move away from that house. But he kept insisting he couldn't afford to, likely true to some extent, and that he'd rather be working. My granddad very sadly passed away at the end of June, and pretty much worked until the day he died because a close family friend took advantage of my granddad, tore his trust to pieces, and crushed his dreams. So if you're out there, Steve, frick you, you're an awful, evil man and I hope you get what's coming to you, and give my regards to Huck when you get there, you son of a bee. I honestly don't know how to respond to this. What the bloody heck? I haven't encountered it but my aunt's side of the family has two brothers that are corrupted policemen in China. While on his deathbed the father's ankles were twisted in attempt to get the inheritance money quicker. She doesn't talk to her brothers anymore and cut contact after the father passed. Frick those two. I hope some sick sadistic crap happens to them when they least expect it. Were they trying to torture him into signing a will? Or does twisting ankles bring about faster death? Or is it some Chinese thing? I am sorry for being insensitive, but I am curious what twisted ankles have to do with getting money. I knew someone who kicked ducks for fun. Just the friendly ducks you get at the park who come begging for bread. Never hung out with him ever again. In my senior year of high school I had a study hall class at the end of the day and instead of studying I would leave campus for an hour until my friends got out. There was another guy in the same situation and we would hang out together during that hour break usually smoking cigarettes and just talking. He seemed pretty normal to me. I mean, he had some odd quirks about him but nothing that would indicate what he later did. A few years after graduation he was living in an apartment building that also housed a lot of students from a small college that was in town. Apparently he became obsessed with a young female student that lived below him and one night he broke into her place murdered and cannibalized her. He's been in prison serving life without parole ever since. I was almost murdered by a classmate of mine in high school. He tried to run me over with his car after I had confronted him about something I don't even remember. We were in the school's large empty parking lot. I managed to dodge the car mostly, but the side mirror smacked me in my side hard. Then he put it in reverse and tried to back into me. The bumper hit my hip, and I was afraid it was broken. He hadn't backed up too far, and the car was right next to me. In the 2 or 3 seconds I was recoiling from the pain. He cranked the wheel over hard and tried to sideswipe me. I managed to put both my hands against the door of the car and lean against it with my feet behind me to keep my legs away from the wheels. At which point he got out of the car and started walking after me with a metal pipe. I was lucky that a teacher had seen the whole thing and she had called the school police officer. He got arrested, and I was summoned to court. He never even got convicted of attempted murder, but he did get assault with a deadly weapon, 
He had hit the school police officer with the pipe, battery, felony assault and a few other charges like disorderly conduct. He was sentenced to 11 years. His poor parents contacted me over the years, always apologizing or telling me about their son. Apparently they had no idea he could have been that violent. We captured a terrorist cell in Iraq. There was a fairly large population of mentally disabled in the area, likely due to inbreeding. These guys would grab one of these people, strap a bomb to them, and send them into a crowded public area, usually by just telling them that their family was there. Once they got in the crowd, they would remote detonate the explosive. These guys showed no remorse when we caught them. We couldn't really touch them. Had to turn them over to the Iraqi authorities. Don't know what happened to them. Worked at a daycare and there was this 3 years old that I was certain was going to grow up as a psychopath. Don't know if that's evil but from his first day, he took pleasure in hurting and being cruel to other kids, laughed a terrifying joker laugh when he was getting amped up to hurt people. I was not the head teacher so I couldn't advise his parents but they were worried about his behavior as we all were. I, I tried to intervene and teach him to express his anger in words but it didn't seem to help. I hope he got some therapy and is okay now. I met one of those two. Kid was absolutely gorgeous. Bronzed ringlets, light green eyes, and an angelic smile. He'd sharpen his pencil and start stabbing kids, chairs, walls, whatever was there. Once when a kid threw up, he got kids to join him jumping over the massive puddle. Then he pushed one into the puddle. It was a freaking nightmare having him in this summer camp. When I was about 12, I was part of the best soccer squad at my local soccer club. It was quite high level and had to work a whole year to get my spot in the starting 11. Was a great feeling to make it. Unfortunately, the kid whose spot I had taken was the coach assistant's son. When we received info about the start of the next season, he gave my father wrong info which meant that I showed two weeks later than anybody else. I got punished by being sent in the B squad, lost all love for soccer in a few months and stopped playing indefinitely. Years later I realized that it was a mistake but I had left the game for so long that I never believed I could make anything happen anymore. This dude stole a kid's dream just so his kid could play more regularly. What a freaking C. I had the exact same story. I managed to win a trophy to a national soccer tournament allowing me and my 12 year old team to train one week in France national team training ground. Clara Fontaine. The president of the club called my mother three days before leaving to say that it was cancelled. Only to find out he put his son on my spot who had never played for the team freak. This. Guy. Not me but my cousin does missionary work in a rough but improving part of northern Iraq. He's never said much about seeing combat or violence but he did tell me a story about the first time they arrived in a town village that Dish had been to. When he arrived the people there were in the process of moving the dead from the homes where they had been killed. Most of the women and children. My cousin said that in this village was the first time that he really understood and could feel what true evil was. On a positive note, he did say that even in these places where terrible suffering is part of life that brings truly the best out of people. Edit. Typing is hard on phone. My brother. He used to swing my cat around by the neck. Like a freaking toy. Poor girl is traumatized. Never trusts anyone. My brother also kills random bugs. Like. We once found a praying mantis. And he decided to crush it with a rock because he felt like it. It was still alive and he picked it apart. My brother hurts our animals for fun. Attacks people. Steals stuff. Lies. Laughs at others pain act. He's cruel hearted. My GF was telling me about how her cat went missing. And what did he say to her after grabbing the phone from my hand. I hope she gets hit by a car. Besides, if cats have 9 lives I can kill her the other 8 inches all because she wouldn't play Splatoon 2 with him. Did I mention my parents baby him not only because he's the youngest, but because he's the only boy my mom and dad have ever had. So he treats me like a peasant, and hurts me on a regular basis. Then my parents yell at Emmy for it. It freaking sucks. Film his butt abusing the pets. If your parents still baby him after that show your school counselors. This dude's on his way to being a killer. Or worse. Posted this before but I feel it belongs here better. When I was visiting Bangladesh, 
They used to have these political riots called missiles where people would riot and fight and often it would get bloody. One time we were getting candy as kids from a store and were steered away from it by my cousin who lives there. Just in time. Cause two groups of people were coming at each other. I remember being pulled away to safety but seeing a man bash another woman's head in with a metal rod. I'll never forget her begin to move less and less. As I got further I eventually saw the entire time there was a toddler just sitting there watching it happen to their mom. With no idea what was going on. I never knew what happened to the kid. It was the horrible thing. I couldn't believe someone could do that to someone else. There was this one girl I met when I was in 6th grade. She fantasized about creeper pasta and the human anatomy. When she got to high school, she covered herself in acid to try to get closer to Jeff the killer. I found out not too long ago that she was planning on killing everyone in middle school. When I was in 6th grade, she fantasized about creeper pasta. Thank you now I feel old. I worked with a narcissist. It made me question my concept of good and evil. He was undoubtedly a negative impact on the workplace. He created drama, conflict, and hurt morale. But I don't think he had any choice in the horrible things he did. I'm not sure if narcissists are born or made, but he really couldn't help himself. My former housemaster at boarding school. This man loved to beat students. He was known for it. Everyone feared this man. His name alone would send you running. The day I realized that he was a true sadist was when he had was beating this kid for stealing and he told me and some other kids to hold him by his legs and arms. He came back with canes that were as thick as mop sticks. When I saw those I realized he was a sadist, though that word was not one I used even though I knew what the word was. It just dawned on me how truly evil that man was. He went out of his way to get these ridiculously thick canes to use to beat 10 to 18 year olds. After he beat you he would make you clear half a tennis court's worth of land until it was completely bare. This would take people hours to do. He would make people miss mandatory school programs that you could get suspended for not attending. A teacher asked a student who was under punishment cutting grass who punished him and he said who. The teacher said oh. The other teachers knew this man and his reputation in the dorms. He also created a specific stress position punishment. We named it after him. It was a modification of one of the common stress position punishments. It was regular thing to hear people screaming in the morning while getting a beating from him. If you took it without making a sound and squirming, he would make it worse by hitting you more or getting a wire. Certain belts that hurt more, a thick cane and other whipping instruments. I do not recall him having an actual whip but he probably did have one. He also used to use mop sticks. Sometimes he would come back from a night of drinking and look for people who stayed up when they were supposed to be asleep and beat them. He once went to a whole other dormitory that he was not in charge of in the middle of the night to beat a kid that he saw from about 100 meters away. He could not open the gate like he could in the dormitories he was in charge of because he was not the house master of those dorms. So he got out of his apartment and delivered the slaps through the gate. This butthole was also a teacher and would act all nice in class and the girls liked him. They had no idea how much the bastard terrorized us and did not really care when they were informed. The school knew that he was brutal and would sometimes ban him from beating students, but he would just get an older student to beat them instead and eventually he would resume the beating. He also still had his favorite stress position and making you clear grass. Every week there was a cleanliness inspection and almost every week the dormitories he was in charge of won. He made people clean like crazy and I think it was just a part of his need to control and dominate us. That man seriously scared the crap out of me. My dad's ex-girlfriend murdered her own child. Her other kid saw their sibling's body. It was clearly premeditated. She is a horrific person. Manipulative. A liar. And abusive. I read one of her letters to my dad after she was arrested. It starts with a sex dream, that was fun to read about my own father, and then talks about how she found Jesus. No remorse, no mention of either of her kids. It was absolutely sickening. I did 5 tours of Bosnia during the war, 3 as a UN peacekeeper and 2 under NATO jurisdiction. I have seen what people on both sides did to people who were former friends and neighbors. The most frightening thing about it was that the people carrying out these acts weren't sociopaths. They were teachers, doctors, shopkeepers and farmers. They simply felt justified in doing it. Saw lots of grisly things. True evil lives inside us all. 
It just takes the right situation to draw it out. I thought I was above it but more than once I seriously considered slotting someone. I knew what they had done and a part of me thought that was good enough to decide that they had earned a bullet. One day I realized that I was no different to them. I just had more discipline and restraint when it came to my impulses. And most of us felt that way. Seeing what we did day after day, week after week affects you no matter how hard you try to block it out. I think that is what scares me most about that time. I unknowingly dated a narcissist. I knew something was wrong with him on our first date when I looked into his eyes. They were just cold, dead, empty, like he had no soul. I was instinctively unsettled, but he was also smart, shy, and handsome and I figured maybe he had high functioning autism so I brushed it off as social awkwardness. Wrong, he went on to be incredibly manipulative. Abusing me in such subtle ways I was always doubting myself and by the time he left me he had worn me down to a husk of the person I once was. We only dated for a few months yet he managed to destroy me before I could figure out what was even happening. I never knew there were people like that in the world. People who are truly evil. And it rocked me to my core. I have been in therapy for years recovering from this. Always trust your first instincts. My former best friend was like this. I don't think she was a full-blown narcissist, but had tendencies and some type of personality disorder. I could write a book about all the manipulative stories, lies, and exaggerations she used to isolate, gaslight, and control me. I will probably have to go to therapy before I'll feel ready to make new friends. It was a dude who was committing health insurance fraud, who got caught but had pulled up to the building in a brand new Audi and came up the elevator in a new suit acting smug as frick about getting away with it. That's the dumbest thing someone could do. Depends on how you would describe an encounter. I used to work with RPAs, drones, in the Air Force so, as you can imagine, I have seen a lot of crap. I remember very clearly we were on station overlooking an ISIS controlled city and we observed a massing of people. In the center of the crown were a couple executioners and prisoners. With there being a large crowd around theirs was nothing we could do so we watched as heads literally rolled after being chopped from the bodies. It's crazy to think that what I was watching on my screen on the other side of the world was real and happening at that very moment. Early in my news career I viewed footage of genocide victims exacting revenge on people from the ethnic community that had committed genocide against them. The video showed an entire extended family bound hand and foot inside a house. In the middle of the main room was a huge pile, maybe 6-8 feet tall. It was a pile of bodies body parts. It was hard to see anything because of what I first thought was extreme static on the video. Then I realized it wasn't static. It was blood spray. People were hacking the pile with swords and blood was spraying up in huge arcs. One by one people were added to the pile and stabbed hacked to death. The killers were slathered in blood, and dancing in celebration as they killed. It taught me that we're all capable of the most horrible acts, and that evil begets more evil. You'd think people who'd seen their entire family's communities murdered would want nothing to do with murder. But you'd be wrong. Vengeance and hatred can make people do anything. My stepmother's 6 year old nephew is showing all the signs of being a sociopath and a sadist. He has severely physically harmed several students in his school including trying to drown a classmate in the toilet several times. He once tried to strangle a little girl. He locked his older sister in a metal garden shed with a padlock for 4 hours in 100 degree weather and lied about it when asked. The police were called because his mom thought it was a kidnapping. They heard the girl screaming and released her. Their dog had puppies and they kept one. He slammed the dog's head in a car door killing it. He routinely holds a lit lighter to his body, including his genitalia. He enjoys hurting others. These people live in the mountains and to get from their house to town they have to come down the mountain so a road that is on the edge of the mountain. The little boy unbuckled himself as his mom was driving around a bend where there was a 200 foot drop on the other side and put his hands over her eyes. More recently he found a belt with a metal buckle and started beating a neighborhood kid with it. One morning his mother came into the kitchen to get breakfast ready and found him hiding behind the doorway with a large knife. She dodged just in time as he swung at her. Even more recently his aunt gave birth to a new baby. My step aunt woke to go get the baby for a feeding and couldn't find him. They looked everywhere. The 6 year old was watching with a smile. 
They eventually found the baby in the dryer, asleep but sweaty. The boy regularly physically attacks his mother and sister, leaving them bloody and bruised. A few months ago I went up for stepmom's birthday and the little boy was present. We were all staying the night at the house. He spent the whole day being sweet and loving towards me until night time when suddenly he stared at me with these horrible emotionless eyes and told me he didn't like me anymore and wanted me to leave. He then went around the hall and stared at me for a while. I didn't sleep that night. ETA. Okay folks. I can't answer every single response. I cannot verify the details because this is Reddit so I can't make anyone believe me anyway. However, I have posted about this child once before. This is the shorter version. The child has since has punishment and treatment and all sorts of other medical intervention. He will not be attending public school this year. He's currently in an outpatient program with an aide who goes everywhere with him. He lives at home because they have no other option. There's no institution that will take a child as young as 6. Not in their area of Virginia. It's literally the mountain boonies. And these are not wealthy people. The kid is on Medicaid. They're doing their best with what they have. I live 10 hours away from them and their distant relatives. All of my info is from a reliable second hand but I trust my info. So get up out out of my comments. You'll are irritating me. Dude. He needs to go to a mental hospital. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.